Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope all of you are doing really, really well. So this is your Man City vs Chelsea match preview. And tomorrow we need to hope that we don't get bad because that's we're not we're not winning tomorrow, no way. And we're not even getting a draw, so hoping we all win a battering, maybe lose two one, two two nil, something like that. Bit respectable, you know. Anyway, before we get into all that, please do like and share this video. And if you like this in general, please do subscribe to the channel. And let's get into it. So tomorrow we are taking on the champion elect, champions elect. So by the time we play Man City, most likely they will be champions. And most likely they are already champions elect. They can win against us, and they will be champions if Arsenal win against Nottingham Forest today. If Nottingham Forest do not do beat them, then our uh, Man City will be Premier League champions at that moment, and we will be the first team to give them a guard of honor. This is going to be interesting. Now I have been. Watching Man City close in recent games and they have been absolutely fantastic. Especially at Etihad, they have rarely dropped points at home at Etihad since uh, I think their 23 match run unbeaten streak started. They drew away to Forest, they drew away to um, Leipzig. I think there's two more other results, I can't remember those. Yeah, so most of their draws have come away from home. At home, they have been absolutely spectacular. And that's why they have managed to catch, Ar catch Arsenal because Arsenal, I think, were 9 or 10 points clear. But I see here going on this mad run since February and caught up with Arsenal and now going to be winning the league. And that just shows what a top manager, I mean, the top players can do because they can turn it on at any moment. Because they've done this in the past as well. And I remember Liverpool were uh, head by five or six points a couple of years ago. But Man City were relentless. They kept on believing. They eventually caught them. Every single player was fighting for the badge. Every single player was playing for everything they had in their body. Until their last moments, and Man City are the ideal football club. Now people are gonna say, "Oh, they're state run, but so what?" So, um, we got, I mean, as Charles fan, we got American billionaires, and these guys not. Uh, surely they are doing something past in the past as well. I don't understand this state run club thing. Come on, if, if you're still state run club, you need to do your scouting. You need to do everything before you're successful. You just can't be like, "Oh, well, let's just throw money." It won't work like that. Uh, well, Man City, they're fantastically run club. You, now, now they don't have to pay, spend 100 million to get sign, big signings. I remember them getting Alvarez for 15 last year. They got Perot, the central midfielder, for 7 odd million. He's going to be another superstar. I've seen him play for uh, Argentine, the Argentine club, and he's been fantastic. And that just shows their scouting, how good their scouting is, how good their multi club model is. Because most of the players do go on loan to, like, so Girona, there's like. Uh, there's some other teams, you've got Mumbai City, all those type of teams. And the multi club system is fantastic on Man City. Uh, then you got the, the team itself. Man City, the team itself on the pitch is absolutely splendid. splendid. You've got to give credit to Pep for that. And everything around Man City has been based around Pep. Because Pep came in, he has his own backroom stuff, he has his own sporting director. Even the academy coaches were ex La Masia, so... The way Man City's academy team play is very, very similar to how the first team plays. So that means uh, Man City, when those youth players do go to the first team, it's a no real change in style, which is fantastic. So I think Chelsea, we are looking at that. We've been looking at buying uh, Strasbourg recently in France. We're looking to buy Pontemensis in Portugal. Uh, I think the way we're making signings, we're looking to build a young team. So I think, this, uh, I think the real team that Bowley and Co are looking at it is this Man City because that's what they meant by long-term progression because Man City didn't hit, have it easy in their early years. They had to find the right manager, they had to find the right setup before all of this was kicked into action. But enough about praising City. I mean, we had to praise them again, don't we? Because they absolutely rinsed Real Madrid apart on Wednesday. Real Madrid were poor. Of course, Real Madrid were poor, but City were exceptionally good. I think they had like 79% of the ball in the first 23 minutes. That is big amount of possession for a game. That's for a game that's, which has two really even teams in it. Now, talk about Chelsea. We have been all over the shop. We drove it Nottingham Forest last weekend at home. And it was a tough watch. Except those seven minutes aside in the review. It was a tough watch. It wasn't good enough. It was slow. We were pedestrian. And we weren't really enjoyable to watch. But now, we probably have our hardest game of the season. With the team's confidence down to zero. And I'm scared. I'm actually scared about tomorrow. Now the only way we can salvage something is if we show some sort of fight. And we actually sh show something. 
because uh, recently we haven't been showing much there's how news about Pacino coming again so hopefully that gets confirmed soon but that's the only real thing that's really keeping us going as fans because I have left I have this I don't think Chelsea are ever gonna have this kind of season again we haven't had anything to fight for we're not gonna get we were never gonna get relegated even if it's like 1.0.1 percent chance it wasn't gonna happen and we weren't gonna qualify for a year but it was such a dull season to have and and hopefully the next season we just need to improve because this season cannot be happening again. Now Bowley and Co, of course I've said about them, they have the vision of being a Man City. You cannot let you cannot be letting these kind of seasons creep in. Uh anyway. To my Lampard's press conference, Lampard and to my injuries, Reese, Mao, Chil Chivo, Angolo, Kukurea, Kula Bali and Badia Shile is all out for tomorrow. Great stuff. So basically, half the starting lineup is technically injured. Beautiful. And some of the other stuff that Lampard has said about City is fantastic. They're the fantastic team to watch, etc. And the one thing that really got me about Lampard's press conference was when he said this. Is that what he said? The, I think the journalist asked him a question. What do you think about Chelsea? What do you think Chelsea needs to do next season? And Lampard said number one thing was every single player needs to be fighting for the spot. Now, that might not sound anything, but I think that's loads of detail. He's saying, basically, that Chelsea should look to move on all the players who are not willing to be here next season and make sure the team is building, the squad is there, and they compete with each other with all of them wanting to play for Chelsea. I think that's what he's meaning. And I think that's the right step. That's the first step in the right direction. You can have all the qualities in the world, but you need to get that fighting spirit because you want them. You, I think... For a successful title challenging team, you want two players in each position, in my opinion. With maybe a third in, like, as a versatile player who can play anywhere. You know what I mean? So that's what Lampard meant. Then Lampard meant about how to talk about Haaland, how Haaland's been so good. And apparently Lampard wanted him his first time, but as first time when he was Chelsea manager, everyone wanted Haaland. Haaland was going to be a big thing, but I think he said we, I had an interest in when we played Southwick in pre season. So that was before Haaland blew up. So. That's good talent ID personally. And Lampard has that. He has very good talent ID. Just his coaching doesn't match up to it. And if you were if you were just half a decent coach, I think Lampard would be a good good manager to have in your team. But his coaching, his teams are so shambolic. His pressing is all over the park. It's probably the one of the worst I've ever seen. So there's what Toma Lampard. City, we'll talk about City how fantastic they are. And uh, City now have the top lineup, so I do think they won't change much from the Real Madrid game. And will we? Whew, what lineup would I go with if I was Chelsea? I'll go with Kepler Goal. I think Mendy's gone. Mendy, we've seen links with Tottenham. Now, let's see what happens there. But I think Edward Mendy's gone, so that. <laughs> so that. So there's no real point playing him as he's leaving the club. And I think the way he played against Nottingham Forest already suggests to me they did not deserve to be starting in. So in comes Kepa. Right back, it has to be Chalabar. Chalabar and Grealish, maybe I think we might have a better chance than Grealish versus Aspi. I, mean, I think Grealish was going to absolutely rinse Aspi apart, but I think Chalabar's got a better chance. The two centre backs. Well, we haven't left ourselves with many options here, have we? So I'll go with. I guess so. Uh, for Fire and Thiago Silva because that's our only options. Left back, Lewis Hall, no real options again. I'll play a double pivot, play Enzo, play a Kante. But, and then as a 10, I'll play Carney Chukwameka because we have stopped Chukwameka going from, from going to the Under 20 World Cup. Uh, so we did, he deserves to be playing, in my opinion. And he deserves to be playing because he literally sacrificed not going to the World Cup. Even if he's Under 20, it's still a World Cup just to play for Chelsea. So I think in a. He should be starting. Modric on the left. I don't know why he was struggling. Sterling had a good game against Forest, but I'll keep on the bench, bring Modric back in. And I'll start with Nani Madreke. Now, Nani Madreke has been really, really good, in my opinion. He has. He looks like he's not shying away from the ball. He's willing to create chances. His decision making sometimes is a bit airy, but that's only going to get better with age. And up front, we haven't gotten really any options here. It has to be Kai Havertz. And that's my lineup, and I don't think we can change much, to be honest on this. And my score prediction, I'll be completely, completely honest with you guys, and we are going to lose tomorrow, and it's going to be 3-0. I'll, I'll be generous, I think we'll lose 3-0.
Now the only hope we have is hopefully Forest beat Arsenal and City already title winners. Then there might be the celebration mood and then we might have a chance. But that's like, come on. The way City are playing, I just don't see we think we have a chance at the moment against Man City. And that was my Man City versus Chelsea match preview. Moving over to some other bit of interesting stuff. So this was this news came out on Thursday really. Ruben Loftus cheek is off to AC Milan. So uh, we have staring out the clear out. So the target is for the Chelsea board to at least get rid of ten players by I think 30th of June. So this is the first step and it is Ruben Loftus cheek. Ruben Loftus cheek is going to AC Milan and I'm I'm happy for him. I think he's a very, very good move for him personally. Italian League, I think he'll do well. Slower league, he'll be physically dominant in most teams. So I think him going to AC Milan is a good move. I think he'll play in the Mazzella 8 role. And that's his best position at Chelsea. We have used him in so many different positions. He just has completely ruined his development, in my opinion. Plus the ACL injury, he has completely finished him off. So I genuinely thought he was he had ability. He he was a top tier, tier midfielder. Under Sari. But that injury completely killed him. And I'll never forget Roman for doing that stupid friendly. And that's cost off cheek and injury. Uh, well, the uh, Ruben he'll be going to Milan. I do, I think he'll suit Milan well. So we got Theo Hernandez, we have got Eden Hazard. I think those two, and not Eden Hazard, Rafael Leal. So that left side combination with Lofty Cheek, Leal, and Hernandez is going to be deadly. As so Chelsea we had Hazard, Alonso, and Lofty Cheek combination, which was quite good as well. So I think he'll do really well in Italy. And this is just the start for us. We need to be getting rid of more and more players. We need to get rid of so many. Can name Kovacic, Gallagher, Mendy. As, and oh, so many more. I can't. I got a whole list. But I'll be talking too long. So yeah. So we need. To, we need to keep on working. Apparently, Pochettino said he only wants 22, 24 to twenty-five players to come pre-season. So that's gonna be good. And hopefully, we can move on the right track on the right tracks. Now, this season we have written off. We have finished. Yeah. But next season we have to show signs of improvement under Poch. So hopefully, that's the only thing that's giving me some positivity. Isn't that? Next season we won't be as bad as this, but right now, wish us luck that we don't get bad against Man City. Anyway, this was my Chelsea vs Man City preview, plus my take on Rosalind Loftus-Cheek moving to AC Milan. And if you like my video, please do like and share this video. If you like my video in general, please do subscribe to the channel. Leave me your opinions in the comments down below about Man City, about Chelsea, what lineup, what do you go with, what, what is the score prediction, all that good stuff in the comments down below. And I hope to see you guys later.